some people and not others. So. <laughs> You'll have a lot of choices up there. I got that on record. <laughs> uh, just a little bit of business before we start chapter eight. Uh, I find out Dale reviews these, and he apparently heard something on the camera that I did not hear. And I'm sorry, I'm doing the best I can with them. And if for some reason I don't hear and you know that I didn't understand you, please say something. But what he thought he heard, or said he heard on the tape, was that we believed that somebody thought that, and I didn't say it, but maybe I caused it, so I'm going to correct it right now. <laughs> we are spirits. We were created spirits by God. All right? Right. God is a spirit. He's existed forever. Ever. That's not true of us. We have a start. It was when God created us. Yes. Okay? And it, I don't know if that came from, uh, maybe, I, I've been searching. I, I've gone through a couple of hours looking up things, uh, the references in Scripture. And you know, if you've got a Strong's Concordance, if you look up body, you'll find there's a, this, less than 200 references to body. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There are a thousand total, 1,100, to body, soul, and spirit, all individually. So that it means that the uh, one spirit has the most, it's almost 500. Just the behind it is soul. And way back at the beginning is body. And I said, and to, maybe I oversimplified something, and then I said that I believed that we were body, soul, and spirit, that the, the body consists of the spirit and the soul. Mm -hmm. All right? And you'll find different interpretations. You'll find disagreements of what people think about that. Body and spirit are often mentioned together. Body and soul are mentioned together. Okay? For the purposes of moving forward with this class, I believe, and I had stated that there was no body unless, the, or implied at least, there was no body unless the spirit and soul were came together. Okay? Neil and I had a little discussion about that, and, I had, and it was fortuitous because I had written a note that I wanted to talk to him about it because the more I study it, the more questions I ask. And I don't have all the answers, folks, as much as I'd like to. So I'm going to keep studying this situation. But for right now, let us agree, if we can, that when we die, our spirit goes back to God, which I've always said. Amen. He suggests that the body go, or the uh, soul goes with the spirit. They're there together. And there makes a lot, that makes a lot of sense. But it also raises some other questions, okay? But for our purposes, this soul and spirit are together okay. with God, and the body's doing what it's doing, decomposing, whatever. As I say, the more I study it, the more questions I have about some of these things. And for believers, believers, what I said about soul and spirit, that applies to believers yeah. only. Mm. And I'm going to share with you, look at uh, somebody, look up the uh, chapter 16 of Luke. You'll find that Jesus is giving us a story, and I'm trying to remember the exact verses, and I'm sorry, they're not coming to me. I'd say 18, but I might be wrong. Anyway, Jesus is telling us what it's like up there, because he said, remember, Abraham is up there, and he was with Abraham and a man by the name of Lazarus, who was a beggar. Remember the story? Yeah. And there's another person up there. Remember who that was? It's not named, but he's described. Oh, bad people are called rich people. So, Abraham. He was a rich man. Abraham. Abraham and Moses. Who was with him? You have to speak up. Moses. Uh, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. 
Luke 16, verse 22 and 23. Luke 16, verse 22 and 25. Okay. Yeah. Now, would you be kind enough to read that and okay. to do it as Okay. Project, if you will, for my benefit. Okay, you want me to start with how the how the parable starts. So yeah, nineteen. Yeah. Okay. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen and lived in luxury every day. At his gate was laid a beggar named Lazarus, covered with sores, and longing to eat what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs came and licked his sores. The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is, confront, is comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, between us and you a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who want to go from here to you cannot nor can anyone cross over from there to us. Okay. Does that paint the picture that might help you to know who's where when? Okay, you got a choice. And we know that we can recognize people. Yeah. And where will believers end up? If you will, based on... Remember, by the way, that Jesus is telling this story before he's crucified. Right? Mm -hmm. Where will they end up? Pardon? Where will they end up? Yep. In heaven. Okay. In heaven, where will we? Christ will be there. And then we'll also know that he, he did this story before. He wasn't there in heaven as such. He's talking about the things they knew. They knew that Father Abraham would be there. So they're talking about the bosom of Abraham. Rock of my soul in the bosom of Abraham. Right? <coughs> well, that, that's... So at any rate, that tells us where believers are. Paul also did, uh, said something in uh, Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 5. And he, uh, verse 9. Okay? Says to, talking, he's talking to believers now. Remember, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we <coughs> wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as you also are now doing. So, be comforted in the fact that believers will be, whether we live or die, whether you're raptured or whether you get to die first, you have to die first, <laughs> whether you die first or not. We also, from the <coughs> Luke story, you get the other half of the story, right? We can see two places, heaven and hell. They can be, and you go back to Revelation, and you think about heaven, hell is going to be dumped into the lake of fire. <laughs> Okay? And the lake of fire is where God can keep his eye on it. So he will see what goes on there. And the lake of fire is constant torment. And hell isn't much better, apparently. That's before the, before the final lake of fire. So we don't want to be with the rich man. Yeah. Right? Something else from that story, if we go further, I think, and maybe I just... At any rate, the story goes that, okay, we can't make the chasm. He's, the rich man says to him, well, send oh, somebody yes, sir, as a sir, messenger sir. to my... Yeah, yeah. he said send, a, I was already hit with that, send, send Lazarus back to his brothers yes. who are still living to save them. And Abraham says, 
They have Moses and the prophets. Let them listen to them. Now what's the next line? No, Father Abraham, he said. But if someone from the dead goes to them, they will repent. And the next line? And he said to him, if they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced, even if someone rises from the dead. Amen. Because Lazarus had already risen once from the dead. <laughs> Say that last again, please. Lazarus has already risen once from the dead. That's not the same. Same Lazarus? It's not yeah. the same. Different Lazarus. Lazarus. Different Lazarus. Yeah, that's right. that's right. That's right. This is a different Lazarus. <laughs> this is his okay. better cousin. Okay, folks. Are we, are we they didn't listen on the board no, that we understand there are no souls? See, with, with what way I had, had said that the body didn't, the, the soul and the spirit had to be together before there was a body. The body and the spirit had to be together before there was a soul. And that left room for the conjecture that there were souls floating around waiting for those to be together. And uh, Dale pointed that out to me, and I am grateful, and I want to make sure we understand that our souls are, we die with, as believers with Christ. Where is Christ? In heaven at that point. Right. And we, we agree with, with that. We know there are no souls, no believer souls wandering around. Okay? Are there unbeliever souls wandering around? Well, I'll tell you what. I have to ask my... I'm gonna, oh, no, really? I don't want to get too far into this, but I'll share this fact. And I raise so many questions. Like, for instance, what happened on the day of crucifixion and when the graves were opened, what came out of them? Bodies. And they walked around. Dead people. Dead. And they were recognized just bit by, okay? Who who were the ones that came out? Maybe they were only believers. I do not know the answer to that. Uh, when I when we die, we, our soul and spirit goes up there. We've been cremated or placed in a, a tomb, sure. whatever. What comes up? And uh, for us, we know. But what about for the unbelievers? We know that they're going to they're not going to be raised, resurrected, if you will, until the very last, right at the end of the millennium, right? Yeah. They're going to be raised. They'll get new bodies. And they're going to get new bodies so that they can be punished for eternity. Okay. All right? So what did they come up with? Their old bodies. What do we go up? When do we change? It is... I've got a real answer as to when we go, when this, the dead who are going to meet the living in the air, what form do they have? Their bodies and their souls, are they with Christ? We know that from Revelation 6, we know that the bodies, that the souls of those who were killed in the red tribulation are there. Is it possible? And we know that from the Christ story, that Abraham's uh, and Lazarus were somewhere. They aren't in heaven, apparently. They're in some place. Now, the Catholics have got all this figured out. They, uh, they, they put everybody in purgatory, if I understand it correctly, okay? But uh, I, am have to, I will have to be content until I find an answer that I do not have at the moment with the fact that my body, when I die, my soul and my spirit will be with God, <laughs> waiting for my body, and not really for that old guy. I, mean, I think they'll get a little was concerned that I called it a temporary. This is temporary. Paul tells us it's a tent. That's a temporary Only residence. Between. Pardon? It's in between the beginning of the soul and the spirit. Then the body is included, and then the body goes away, and the spirit and the soul. Now, it's in between, and it's just a temporary holding. So at any rate, when and I, I can believe it's temporary. It's got to be temporary because I certainly mine hasn't been built for eternity. <laughs> well, well, we're all close to the use by date. <laughs> or expired. <laughs> I've got two bits of, just of, of information health wise. One is it turns out wasn't so bad, and it finds out maybe I just don't drink enough water, and then you might get a heart murmur. And I had one when I was a young kid, and I had one for a long time. And I was worried when he died, 
told me he heard that. And I go talk to my doctor, and he says, no, don't worry about that. It's too, I could hardly hear it. But the other thing is, I got measured. <laughs> I am five foot five. I've never been real tall, but I'm five eight. You know, the military says five eight or five eight and a half. You know, so things can happen to you. Is where now? I, I said, suggested to you. He said, stretch. I can actually reverse some we of that. We all stretch. Okay, so stretch and hydrate. So you walk around like this. Don't worry about it. I used to be six eight. <laughs> Was it the whiskey? <laughs> okay. So the same God who knew us when we were in his womb, or in your mother's womb, knows us and will know us when we're in heaven. And as believers, we don't have to worry about some of that other stuff we worried about before. Chapter 8. We go now to the seventh seal. We've heard that we've gone through six seals. Remember, they're all on the scroll, and the scroll's in the hand of Jesus, and he is. Uh, he is opening the scroll. And now we're done with that. And those were, during that time, we had four of the seals were talked about what's happening on earth during the tribulation. We have an antichrist. Who's been, the neighborhood organizer is what I'm going to call him. He's a charismatic guy who gets all the people together and promises peace. Well, he lies, and then three and a half years later we find out that he's a liar. But we also then have famine. First we have wars. The second horse, horse we gave people took away peace. Gave them wars. Then we have famine. And what happens after famine? Death. Right? So these have happened. And I think I made a mistake the other a week or two ago. And I said that that took over. I gave a number as to how many, not a number, but a percentage of the Earth's population that was gone by then. Don't count on that. I started, the more I think about it, you started to look at numbers and engineering people, finance people, numbers mean a lot. You know what? Watch what the numbers are. For instance, you're going to read now about a third of the Earth being taken. Well, two things happen. I'm, I, I read a lot of commentaries. Some of them say that only applies to the Mediterranean or the Middle East. It'll affect the rest of the world, but the plague happens there. I don't know. I'm not going to argue about that. But we can't take the number. I thought that I could take the start off with 100%, get rid of a third, or you were two thirds, right? That makes sense to me as an engineer. That makes sense. Then the next third has to be come from those two thirds that are left. That makes sense. You know what? You got to realize that they're talking about a third of the land. They're talking about a third of the sea. They're talking about not necessarily the third of population of the world. It's going to be a lot of people die. But don't waste your time trying to figure out how many. Okay? There'll be a whole lot less left at the end of the tribulation than at the beginning. But it's sort of like trying to find the date of the time of the tribulation. I knew an, uh, of an engineer who, for 40 years as a preacher, a uh, Bible teacher, I should have said, swore that you could never figure out when it was, and then he spent the last two years of his public life at least trying to prove that he had done it. He was an engineer. He couldn't, can't tell engineers uh, everything. You know, they, numbers mean a lot. So let's go. Where we are now is at the seventh seal. And what is the seventh seal? You read it? Seven read it? trumpets. Seven, seven, seven angels. Seven angels. Seven angels with seven trumpets. Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay. The seventh seal really reveals something else. The trumpets. Seven more. Judgment. And when we get down to the seventh trumpet, we'll find that this really <coughs> reveals the next uh, judgments. But we are now at a point of judgment. And that's what I want you to think about this as. And the first couple verses tells us that there's a pause in heaven for how long? Half an hour. Half an hour. A half an hour. 
Now think about what the rest of Revelation said. We have John taken up, representing the rapture of us. He's in heaven. And what's going on in heaven? Constantly. Praising. Praising. Worship, right? Noise. Noise. That's silent. The praise stops. Everything stops. <coughs> Does that sound like maybe the calm before the storm? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, let's read. Uh, okay. Some people ask why I have two pairs of glasses. And I'm done. Anyway, let us read from the, oh, the second verse. I just want to explain something there. It says the seven verses... <clears throat> which stood before God. The Greek text says that they are the seven angels in the presence of God. Now, we know from scripture, study of scripture about how many angels have names. Two or three. 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 What? I'm not sure. Three. Okay, can you name one? Michael. 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 Gabriel. Gabriel. Okay. Lucifer. And in the scriptures, the canon as we know them, Genesis to Malachi and Matthew to Revelation, they are the only ones named. Two. You will find in the Apocrypha, which when I first I went to a church and was preaching, and when I opened the Bible to find my, my text, I noticed. Lo and behold, there's an apocrypha in the middle. Okay? And I found that in several churches where that in the pulpit Bible. And in that apocrypha, those are books that didn't make it into the canon. But you can find the names of five more. I'm not going to bother worrying about those, but you can find this. But at any rate, these seven are the same seven that were at the beginning of the revelation. Remember where Christ is standing in the middle of the candlesticks and you're talking about seven angels and they were the angels of the churches. Okay, These are the angels in the presence of God. And they got to be very special angels, right? Now, let us start reading with verse 2 and Oh, two through six. We'll do that. I need a reader. I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Then another angel with a gold incense burner came and stood at the altar. And a great amount of incense was given to him to mix with the prayers of God's people as an offering <coughs> on the gold altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense, mixed with the prayers of God's holy people, ascended up to God from the altar, where the angel had poured them out. Then the angel filled the incense burner with fire from the altar and threw it down upon the earth, and the thunder crashed, lightning flashed, and there was a terrible earthquake. That verse 6 you come to judge. Oh, then the seven angels with the seven trumpets prepared to blow the mighty blasts. <laughs> okay. What's really happening here? We're being shown <coughs> in heaven what happens in heaven to prayers. Prayers of who? Who's, who's doing your prayer? Of the saints. Of the saints, the believers, right? And what are those prayers mixed with? Incense. Incense. Okay, now, incense is sweet smelling to God. And one commentator who says that this represents all of the things that Christ did at the cross on our behalf. The commentator mentions that in order for this to happen, for it to go up, the throne has to be a little higher than the fire, okay? For whatever that's worth. Mm. But it's important. We are seeing happen in the temple that's in heaven. It's going to happen 
the temple is going to one day be here, right? Did I say that? I don't mean that. And that there, in the, there won't be a temple here. It, there was, and it was copied after the temple in heaven. But when we get to the millennium, in heaven they won't need a temple. Is that correct? Church or anything. No, in, in heaven, Christ and Jesus, uh, his Father, God are going to be there. What, who needs a temple? That's right. <laughs> it's all over. They are the temple. Yeah. But this represents what happens in heaven too when we pray, when you and I pray. The angels are just a, a medium here. The incense is, the, is a medium. But God hears all our prayers. <clears throat> That's, I guess, part of the big thing we catch from this. And they're so valuable that the fire comes from the brazen altar. And it's described, if you want a description of that sense of what it is, of course, is a vessel that has fire from the altar under it, and they put incense on top of it. What happens when the incense is warmed by the fire. Makes the aroma. Right? Okay. Now, he then, when that's exhausted, all the prayers are exhausted, we see a turning point. Same censer, no incense. He goes back and he gets fire. This is the fire from the brazen altar, and he throws it down to heaven, down from heaven to earth. Now, that could be a representation of a meteorite or an asteroid or nuclear missiles. These are all things that some of the people, different commentators say. Okay? But it is an expression of God's wrath that he has said, it's over. It's, we've had enough. The wrath starts now. And what happens? Is there? Did we read something about an earthquake there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We get a lot of earthquakes here yeah. in Revelation, and it, the great shaking. Everything's going to shake. Everything we know about. Everything that people who had comfort in. Uh, I love the mountains. Guess what? They're going to move. Yeah. Uh, and it, some of this has already happened. The islands are going to move. We've had tsunamis that have moved islands 100 feet. Hmm. Okay. Big islands, not little ones. So this is power, God's power, being expressed, as we say. This, these judgments are woeful judgments. The seals were judgments, but now we hear the trumpet judgments. So now, the first judgment is only, uh, just read verse 7 for us. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of trees was burned up, and all green grass was burned up. <clears throat> Now, every time we read about one of these, there, I, I'm going to probably say there are people who say it's going to be liberal and people who say it is not. Uh, it can be literal. Did it ever happen before? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Where? Um, it did happen before, and I hope you had the answer. Okay. Egypt. Okay. Blood mingled, right? Hail. That was the seventh, it was the seventh plague, I believe. Oh, okay? The plagues, yeah. And Joel prophesied the same thing was going to happen here in the end. So it's not unexpected. Now, this is one of the places where the commentary that's in front of me here says it probably started, it was the Mediterranean, although it's going to affect the rest of the world. I'm not sure what this guy said, but he probably, one of them says, the rest of the world's going to have some of this. None of us are going to get away without this. But it, the, just remember, as I said last week, this is about the Jews. This all continues about the Jews. It started with Abraham, 
and continues till now, and will continue till the end of the millennium. We, I won't say we became Jews, but we were grafted in. We Christians, okay? So we will share in the rewards of it, and if we were raptured, we don't, we're spared this tribulation. Some of them aren't going to be spared it because we don't we don't acknowledge Christ's leadership until we've seen everybody else go away and we see the tribulation problems come to us. Either way, there's room for us to join Christ in heaven and spend eternity with him. Okay. So that was the first trumpet. One third of the grass all the grass and one third of the trees. Second trumpet, uh, verse 8, please. The second angel sounded his trumpet, and something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turned into blood. A third of the living creatures in the sea died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. Okay. Several things, like a great mountain, okay? Like a great mountain mirror burning with fire. What could that be? A volcano. volcano. Pardon? Volcano. It could be a volcano, that's right. None of, our, none of my contemporary, the commentators said that. What else? Well, something that's happening today is that the China and, I guess, the Iran, are shooting missiles into the Dead Sea and they're killing all of the fish. Huh. It's also into even, the Dead Sea? No, I don't know if it's a Dead Sea oh, or not, but the, wherever they're, they're shooting them, they're killing all of the animals there. Well, I know, the, I know Korea, North Korea, North is Korea yeah. into the, the mm -hmm. sea. I don't know. I, I never thought about that. The fact but a that missile, I mean, can see. do it very e I mean, that can move a mountain. Yeah. That's also, but how about something natural? Meteor? Meteorite? Earthquake? Well, yeah, that could produce something fall again. How about an asteroid? Have you guys an asteroid been could? following yeah. that fact that yeah. way out there's something yeah. that our oh, NASA and those people are trying to figure out how to push away? I could just something. drop it out, you know? Just. So, but the whole <laughs> point is it, it is something <laughs> like good. unto a burning mountain. Touch it's going to kill. Yes. Now, here's again is one of the areas that this commentator, he seems to be to lean to, that's the Mediterranean Sea, which makes sense, okay, from where we are, and that that's all that it's affecting. But even let us assume it is only the Mediterranean Sea. <clears throat> we, that certainly affects the lands around it, does it not? Yeah. People who eat fish out of, the, out of it and so forth. So it will have effects that go on everywhere. Uh, Ships, ships won't move. Third trumpet. <clears throat> Two verses, 10 and 11. The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky on a third of the rivers, and in the springs of the water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that became bitter. Okay. Commentators suggest that this could conceivably take the lives of hundreds of thousands, perhaps even millions. Okay? Uh, we've had an instance in the Old Testament where we had something like that, right? During the Exodus, did they have bitter waters? Well, that's what this was. And how did that? God cure that water? How did he do it? Had Moses cut a branch. Yeah. Yeah. Threw it into the water and it made it sweet. Yeah. Doesn't happen here. <laughs> okay? Does not happen here. Okay. The fourth angel, uh, verses 12 and 13. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened. And the sun, day shone not for a third part of it, and the light likewise. Here again, 
This commentator says they're literal. I'm not so sure. Uh, would someone read, uh, look up for us Luke 21, 25 to 26. signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations for perplexity to see and the waves worry, men's hearts falling them for fear and for looking after those which are coming on the earth for the power of heaven shall be shaken. So 25 and 26. So they're not literal, or they are literal. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Whoa, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the three angels, which are yet, let, yet to sound. Uh, some folks say that might have been an eagle, some people, just a large eagle. And of course, if God can get a donkey to speak to Balaam, if you get an, angel, an eagle flying through heaven, I see no reason to do that. I, I look at this stuff, and unless I think it's unbelievable and look for another answer, it is certainly believable that a an angel could go th fly through heaven. Oh, and uh, I've heard some people tell me recently that eagles, that all angels may not have wings. I don't know. I, I don't know that. I believe they do. <laughs> I have no reason to believe otherwise. Maybe they tuck them in so they're on earth and we don't see them. I don't know. They haven't gotten their wings. But yeah. the woes, it, it, it does sound like the judgments are getting tougher. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. We've got the time. Let's go to nine. And the angel sounded. That's the fifth judgment. And I saw a star fall from the heaven. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And the angel gave the key to who? Yeah. To the evil one, Satan. And what did he do? Open it up. Yeah, opened it up. Right. We talk a little bit about that pit. Well, let's see what scripture tells us about it first, I guess. Okay, would somebody be kind enough to read the next two, ver three verses? Four. Uh, two, three, and four. Three, four, and five. Uh, three, four, and five. Then the locusts came from the smoke and descended on the earth, and they were given power to sting like scorpions. They were told not to harm the grass or plants or trees, but only the people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. <coughs> they were told not to kill them, but to torture them for five months with pain like the pain of a scorpion sting. In those days, people will seek death, but will not find it. They will long to die, but death will flee from them. Okay, and I, I, heard, I should have had you read the second verse. And he said, he opened the bottomless pit. Yeah. And out of the pit came smoke, the smoke as of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Here again, this commentator said it'll probably be concentrated in the old Roman Empire territory. The gates of hell were opened. Huh? The gates of hell were opened. Well, it may, it may be hell. Yeah. Uh, quick comment. And we'll be, let's read the rest, of, rest, rest, to the rest of this for uh, which describes the locust, and I think it's important before I make any more comments. From 7 to 12, would somebody read that for us? And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as if were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the face of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates. 
as if it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and they were stings in the tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, uh, yep. but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollon. 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 One woe is past, and behold, there comes two woes more hereafter. Well, this is another angel name, then. Say so that last week. Oh, they had a king over them, which is the angel. But he's a fallen angel. Right. Right? right. Okay. Right. Think about Jesus when he cured a woman. I think it was a woman. Yes, it was. A woman who was a, could tell fortunes. And she made money for a lot of people. Well, anyway, he chased out all the demons that were in her. And he told them to go back to the pit. And they said, no, please. Don't so send us there. Send us into the swine. Remember that? Yeah. So they get into the swine, and what did they do? They killed themselves. Mm -hmm. They killed the swine. Come in. Scripture does not tell us when the angels were made. We know the first thing about and the devil when he uh, seduced Eve and Adam, right? So, but we know he existed as an angel, and we know he fell from heaven. Right? Later on, we find out that he took a third of all the angels yes, of heaven. He all right? Well, we also know that they were made, we man, humans, were made a little lower than the angels. They have skills we don't have. Okay? I don't know what all of those are, but they have powers that we don't have. And we as believers eventually are, are told that we have power even over the demons, okay, which are the fallen angels. All right? Let's learn to talk a little bit about those demons. They went into the pigs willingly, desired to go there, rather than go to the pit. What does that tell you about the pit? Mm. It must be bad. It ain't nice, right? It's, it's not a good place. So, Apollyon, we, those of you, those of us who went through two years of the Pilgrim's Progress, okay, we met him before. But this guy who was a king over there must be a very cruel king. And it is suggested that the demons, the shape we see of these locusts, they didn't all these fallen angels, they didn't go in there looking like that. They so must not have been too smart. Pardon me? They must not have been too smart. You know, I look at Satan as the first neighborhood organizer. He lied, deceived, told them he was out. Yeah. That is ringing, and I'm sorry. Yeah, that was there. You hear it ring? <laughs> it on. My wife often tells me she hears it ring. Neighborhood organizers. And that is, there we go. <coughs> Turn to God or something. But anyway, you and I think of ourselves as pretty smart. We have scripture. We know the story all the way to the end of the book. And yet we do dumb things. And we still have to... Are you sure that you're not going to deny Christ at some point? Peter did three times. Okay? So these, people, these angels... You gotta also remember Satan was the prime angel. Remember him? He walked through heaven, he was the cock of the walk. He was the supreme. Mm -hmm. So he conned those people, and you and I could be conned too. And that, that's a good lesson that if they were kind, and they could see God, they knew what was going on, and they followed the wrong leader. Do you think any of us do that? Sure. And that could be a leader in your pulpit, it could be a leader in your con in your government, it could be a leader in your family who might be wrong. Yeah. Can't that. And we gotta watch who we follow. Right? But this I want to point make a point about the fact that that really was not a very nice place. 
and that those demons had been abused and trained and to become what you saw. That's not human. It wasn't angels. It certainly wasn't heavenly. The locusts themselves, I mean. And we find out later that a similar image kills a lot of people. It kills later on. It kills with their breath, <coughs> fire, and brimstone, and the humans that are left on the earth. It kills a lot of them just because of the we will call it sulfur. Okay, the sixth trumpet. Let's got a few minutes. And the sixth angel sounded. This is the second woe. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. And the voice said, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the, loose the four angels which are bound at the great river Euphrates. Now these are demons. These are fallen angels. We can know that because they are bound there. And they have a purpose. What do you think that purpose is? <laughs> Let's go see. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. There we can count on a third of all the people were there. It is By the way, okay, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm reading, I went from 15 to 16, okay, and the army of the horsemen, what horsemen? That's what was loosened, four, there were 200,000 thousand. That's 200 million. And he, John, says, I heard the number of them. And we suggest that these are also evil spirits. And I saw the horses in the vision, demon horses, and then that sat on them having breasts of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as lions, and out of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. Of these three, the fire and the smoke and brimstone was a third part of men killed by the fire, the smoke, and the brimstone which, is, which issued out of their mouths. Comment about those four angels. <coughs> when they were holding back <coughs> these people here, they even held back the wind, right? That was true if you, went back, if you go back to the uh, 144,000, they're told to hold back. The things that were happening in the Euphrates now, the things that were happening by those angels who were released before the 144,000, they all kept things concentrated. Because once the winds blow, and they held the winds back, if you remember back then, Diseases, anything that happened within this confined area, it was worldwide. Now we've got a worldwide situation of 200 million horsemen. Quickly, the last couple verses. And the rest of these men that were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, neither repented they of their murders, their sorceries, their fornication, or of their thefts. What does that say to you? Mm. Sounds very that, nice. Does that mean that they enjoyed their sins so much that they were willing to risk the judgment to come? They just didn't that they believe. didn't repent. They just didn't believe because repentance is what it's going to take to it's up in, in here. You have to repent. And when you repent, though, there's a, there's a part to repenting. I'm sorry. I didn't I shouldn't have done that. You have to change in your Gotta heart. change. That's yeah. what it is. It's a change of direction. You've heard me talk before about 
my friends, my Catholic friends, would go out drinking on a Saturday night, drinking and dancing, whatever, and they made sure that they went to confession before they went. So they had a clean slate. But is that repentance? No, not to no. the right person. <laughs> <laughs> you're asking permission. It's hedging your bets. You're asking yeah. another. You're asking another man to forgive you. You're not. Say that last asking, again. You're asking another man to forgive you, not God. That's right. The wrong person. Because it supposedly came with Catholics once they said yeah. that. Yeah. They would So here we have the earth being bombarded with meteorites or missiles or actual mountains being thrown? I don't know. I go with the missiles and the meteorites and asteroids. But people who instead of doing this would find later that they cursed God. Yeah. They didn't ask for his repentance, for his forgiveness. They didn't repent. They cursed him because of what he was doing. Well, that's what Job's wife kept telling them to do. Curse God and die. There you go. Maybe that was the answer. Because they wanted to die, and some of them did now. The, the army before with the stingers and the, the locusts with the stingers, there were men who wanted to die then and couldn't. Oh, well, anyway. Next week we're going to meet another mighty angel. There's a lot of angels in the Revelation. We have a lot of earthquakes. Were they a lot of people angels? die. Let me ask you a question. Is Please. The rest of mankind, were those Jews and Gentiles? Anyone not saying? Oh, I'm sure. Both of them. Let's see, the rest of mankind. Who the... were not killed. Verse 20. Yeah. <clears throat> were they Jews and Gentiles? Yep. Yes, yeah, both of them. Okay. I believe so. Anyone not saved? Anybody who's not saved, that's right. So I think we, we know what travel agent we want, right? Yes. <laughs> you know, we at the little church that we started, we had we used to have evangelists come all the time. And one of the evangelists was a guy who flew a lot. And he was on a plane, and he said the plane was going down. They'd lost an engine, and all the people on there were just begging God. And he said that he went around to as many as he could, you know, to tell them about salvation. And he said so many of them, oh, yes, so, you know, accept it. But the minute they got back on the ground, they denied God. Yeah. You know, and I, I guess that's kind of the picture of what we're looking at Thank here. That wonderful pilot who yes. dropped the bed, right? Yes, you know. It's, a, it's, it's an instant gratification, <coughs> but it didn't stick. It, you know, it wasn't well, sincere. That's, that's an old Dave Gardner joke. The guy's on an airplane, you hear the man saying, if you get us down safely, I'll give you half everything I got. So the plane smoothed down, it landed, and the preacher turned to him and said, I heard what you said up there, I give God half of what you got. He said, I made a better deal. He said, if I ever get on another one, he can have it all. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> well, it's good to laugh at from here, but yeah. from the perspective Amen. of the yeah, latter days. We... Yeah, it's, you know, it's in, to me, I just was thinking about this the fact that, you know, we talked about some of these plagues may not happen worldwide or they may be more concentrated in that. Mediterranean, you know, area, yeah. which it seems like if it was all over the world that there would be so many people dead that they would have seen all of this for themselves that they almost, it's hard to fathom, you know, how people would not believe, whereas if you were seeing it on the news, you know, in happening other places that, yeah. you know, I don't know, you know, I'm just thinking about that, how there would be more people who would still not believe. Well, there are the people in, in Palestine and the, over there are used to having all that yeah. come out of them all the time. <laughs> so well, as technology right advances, people are finding out about that stuff. You see it. So you know, somebody spits on the street in Shanghai, we know about it. We know about it, but it, when it doesn't affect you personally, you know, like, 
but you know, just you feel like okay, that you know, the plague, you know, if we had, for example, as long as we when it first came out, it was somewhere else, it wasn't affecting us. Yes, we knew it was horrible, we knew it was bad, but still, it mm -hmm. wasn't a direct impact on us. <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff that happened we never knew about. Oh, yeah, yeah I know. There were people in Jesus' time that saw everything he did. That's true. In the days of the Lord. Even saw him after he was. Yeah. 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 Even the church leaders of his time were not willing to surrender to his authority because they had a good gig going. That's right. They weren't willing to change. We don't surrender. Most of us, I shouldn't say that. I'm asking you, is there anything in you that you do not surrender to God? Something we hold back. Guilty. There must be a lot of people because they're gonna, you know, they're gonna deny God. But <clears throat> the whole point I, I'll, I'm saying is that even us, those of us who study, we read about it, the whole point is the message is that each of us, all of us, each of us is to surrender all. All of it. And you see how many people were not willing to surrender something. And we'll read more about Babylon. And some sins that are pleasant. Okay? So pleasant that why should I want to change? I'm happy. Okay? Folks, let's close with prayer. And we can continue talking afterward, but that tape's going to run out and then we'll be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for all your wonderful blessings to us. We thank you for the knowledge you give us. We pray for the understanding of that knowledge and the wisdom that goes with it. We pray that you will always be what you say you will be. A loving God, ready for our repentance and our salvation. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, we can't talk about anything.